everybody. I've got Nancy, Dr. Nancy Lee with me today. Woo, tongue twister there for me to get started. Um, and we are going to be talking a bit about the idea of edge computing and what it is. But before we dive into the questions that I have, can you give everybody a quick introduction? Yeah, sure. Hi, guys. Hi, Emma. Thank you for having me. I am Dr. Nancy Lee. I am a director of product, a YouTuber, and also a mentor. And I led leadership positions in several Fortune 500 companies. And right now, my dream is to help people transition from worker bee to a product manager and business leader. And I have my own YouTube channel and also coaching business and teaching people how to make the smoothest transition get into the tech space as a product manager. You can check out my YouTube channel by searching Dr. Nancy Lee, director of product. Wonderful, thank you. And so to get us started, you talked about this idea of transitioning into the world of product management and IT. Can you share a little bit about how you made that transition yourself? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing this up. And actually it's my passion because I curved, I have many curvy ways to get into tech. Uh, myself came from fashion industry. When I got started, I went to a fashion design school in China for four years. And then I just really wanted to get into technology. That, that was over 10 years ago. Um, then I came to the US to study material science and I ended up to become one of the youngest engineering PhD from Boston University, graduating from our school. And afterwards I joined like uh, oil gas company, actually with Shell Oil, where I, I work as engineer and gradually I just discovered tech. Wow, I just, it's fascinating in terms of things can get evolved very quickly. You can also bring your ideas through type of MVP or a quick mock-ups bring, and bring it over to the hands of customers and make a bigger impact much faster. Then I decided to uh, take some training about product management myself and also do some soul searching what really makes me happy that led me to the path of product management and um, yeah, has been fascinating since I became a, a product manager. And now uh, within four years, I transitioned from an individual contributor into a director position now, um, helping others to become a, a product manager and hopefully they will become a leader one day as well. Thank you for sharing that. I love to hear those stories of how people got to where they are as we're highlighting them as kind of experts within this digital transformation space. Um, so I teased it a little while we were getting started, but we're going to talk a lot about edge computing. But I think this is certainly one of those ideas that needs a definition as we head into it. Can you share a little bit about what edge computing is and maybe a use case or two to help everyone get their minds wrapped around it? Yes, actually, edge computing is one of the hottest and latest concept regarding technology trend. If you Google was a top 10 technology trend, you need to watch out in 2020 or 2021. Edge computing is right on it. So quick definition of edge computing for everybody who's new to the space is that you can see that as a decentralized cloud compute which means what if you're able to bring AWS or a different kind of cloud, Google Cloud, into the specific places where data was collected instead of a centralized location. So in that case, we'll have many clouds all over the cities where end users are, and then you're able to achieve the same function as the cloud, however, you have more values um, you can create for customers such as low latency and also you're able to save costs. For example, if today we want to do real-time analytics of our video chat today, if you send it to the cloud and run AI and send it back to us, that definitely be like one minute delay for sure. But if you can bring the cloud right next to your backyard, and then you directly to run AI. I don't know what apps that people would do for us for AI during the video chatting. Um, you can do lots of crazy stuff uh, in real time, get results, which is also huge beneficial during COVID as well, because people have been very bored at home. We're lacking those kind of social interaction. People are craving for like, like real time result interactions and see is anything we can engage together, which required lots of compute power, lots of AI. That's where the edge computing is able to empower all those new applications. 
Um, actually, during COVID, I have a specific use case I was very passionate about um, because it came from New England. And this is also is, is a trend in the industry. We have several uh, vendors in the space reach out to us and talking about there is a demand to do real-time betting of games. For example, like Super Bowl games, I can Tom Brady was traded, but I'm still a big fan of him, right? All the Super Bowl games, any kind of games and out there. Um, actually, right now, fans really want to do real-time betting. They say, oh, what, at what yard he's going to make a score? But if you do real-time betting, you really need to run some AI to pull some information from all over the world. You also need to do it fast. And so that's where the edge computing is able to empower you. If you only run everything in the cloud, it just too slow, all the AI probably take a while to understand Tom Brady already made a score. And, and then like five minutes later, you find out the result. So it's, so it's, so it's very um, different experience this can bring to you. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I think it gives us a nice starting point to kind of launch into this next idea of how is edge computing really driving the ideas behind digital transformation today? Yeah, um, regarding digital transformation, let's first of all identify what do we mean by digital transformation. Um, it is pretty big, depends on who you talk to and the scope can go any directions. And actually I have a student actually, I was very empowered. Um, she was a stay-at-home mom for 14 years and I was able to help her to get back to the workplace and she joined a company, helps hospital to do digital, digital transformation. So I'm very uh, passionate about what we can help others and help women to get back to the work, uh, workforce. In those kind of digital transformations she's going to do or currently doing right now in her new job, is, is trying to introduce like new software technology for hospitals. If you see digital transformation as if, how can I use software component to introduce like automation AI or any kind of new technology that can like boost the performance of existing operations, I see that as digital transformation. And through my work in those like Fortune 500 companies and one of other like a bigger companies before, when we see digital transformation, we also see opportunities in terms of how can we re-architect your existing IT infrastructure. Some of the IT infrastructure is very, very old and we came in to say, what if you change in the past, for, let's say insurance industry, I have several um, like very good connection, people uh, like end users put this way, like uh, a potential end user to share with me regarding in the past, the insurance industry, um, everything was on premise, which means they run all the like local data centers by themselves. And recently they started to think about maybe I should go to cloud and maybe I need to change my infrastructure. That's uh, another way where edge computing come in, for example, if you come in to do the different kind of new infrastructure design for insurance company or even for hospitals, then you can think about, do I need to move everything into cloud? Can I move some of it, some of the critical application in, onto the edge computing nodes we are building right now? Um, the many different companies who is very actively in the space, including like AWS and Verizon, where we're all building like cutting edge edge computing technology. So when you try to redesign your entire tech infrastructure, maybe that's one of the solutions so that you don't need to have like 10 years old technology. So that's one of the things we can do. Um, the other edge computer, uh, the, the digital transformation, which is the first one that my students working on, where if you want to do new automation, new software, new technology, new AI into any companies, then you can think about the performance. Besides doing the automation and AI, how can you make the experience better, better performance for hospitals? Yeah, then edge computing could be a very good solutions and based on the needs of the hospital and specific application. The idea of that, like kind of trying to future-proof your infrastructure a little, I think is really relevant because to your point, you don't want to end up in a situation where you've made a decision rather than looking at some of that emerging technology 
to move to what's the next thing. And then two years later, you're out of date again. So being kind of that emerging technology in mind as you're looking at your transformation, I think is really important. Um, when we take a look at an organization and who needs to be involved in this type of like edge computing project, who do you believe um, you need to kind of gather from the stakeholders perspective? And then how do you um, accomplish getting that alignment with the, the right people within your organization? Very good question. Um, to be honest, I think everyone's depends on the company structure and it is. It is a challenge that everybody needs to push through because all the new technology you always face on like pushback. And the way I see this is that step one, for any organization, we want to increase adoption of edge computing. We want them to think about how can you listen to the priorities of your stakeholders. It's not just a need, it's more a priority. For example, um, I get a chance to talk to one of the biggest national retail chain um, in the past, and that person is a chief technology officer. And when I talk to him, we're also trying to pitch the, the edge computing concept to him. And what we discovered was that actually his top priority was not, I want to change my infrastructure today. His top priority is that my Wi-Fi breaks down all the time. 50% of time, and then my, my store will shut down. I'm very worried. Edge computing or 5G or any kind of new technology we talk about all the, all the time is very important, but right now things broke. They just got broken in my store right now. I want to get it fixed first. So listen to their priorities is the most critical part in my opinion which is you help them to achieve their priority first without solving those broken connectivities in the store. How can you introduce the AI as a stuff? It just broke, right? So uh, that's the step one, what I believe we need to do. And step two is that is understand who is the right decision maker, which means based on our interaction with those uh, like CTO we had before, uh, we realized that if we help him achieve his main like purpose and making things stable and reliable, but the decision maker will be the chief innovation officer because the chief innovation officer is more front forward, right? Someone the chief technology officer makes sure everything stabilized, but her, the, the chief uh, innovation officer is going to build fancy stuff on top. That's where the AI ideas can be introduced through a different stakeholder. So that's why we need to identify who is the right decision makers. And third is have champions in different companies. Um, just like women getting promoted in big companies, we need to get sponsors as well. So having champions for your technology, for your company in those big companies at the for, for them as stakeholders are very critical as well. Uh, of course, those champions take time to build relationship. That's why I always try to give back way ahead of time before you even start to take from others. Um, finally, it's also regarding sharing small wings, which I believe is also very critical to convince other stakeholders because when they make decision, usually they make decision from emotional aspect and the other part is the, the logical aspect, right? Emotional aspect, we talk many times about priorities and I think we talk about that now. Logical aspect is how can we bring like data or any kind of solid wings from other clients or startup or smaller piece of wings that we can use to rationalize the, um, the impact of introducing new technology. So there are four steps, I believe in general, the, the kind of framework we can use. On top of that now is who you deal with. Everybody's slightly different. You just need to modify on top of the framework. I really like that you brought up the idea of prioritization and celebrating those small wins. Those are things that, whether it's edge computing or any digital transformation initiative, I think are incredibly universal. And we I've, I've talked about those in other interviews before. So I love to hear those same ideas continue to come up because that means that we must be all onto something. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for joining me today. And I wanna encourage everybody um, to go check out Dan, 
Dr. Nancy Lee on YouTube and LinkedIn. I'm gonna, one of these days, I'm gonna get it without tongue tie. Um, but thank you so much again for joining me and make sure you follow the links to go check her out and learn some more um, from her YouTube channel and what she shares on LinkedIn. But thank you everybody and have a wonderful day. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys.